All right. So I will call the November 24th, 2020 um, meeting of the Moore Public Housing Agency um, to order. Uh, my name is Greg Lemke. I'm the board chair. If the other others would like to introduce themselves. Alexa Dixon, secretary. Michael Carbone, vice chair. This is Don Bacon. I'm the director with Moorhead Public Housing, and I have Tony Vondal in my office. She's the housing manager. Shelly Dahlquist, council liaison. All right. So, any agenda amendments? I have no amendments. Seems to be heard at this time. Not at this time. Okay. Our first item is the approval of minutes. So request board approval of October 27th, 2020 meeting minutes. I'll move to okay. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Next item is request approval for payment of bills. Request board approval of payment of bills, resolution 11 24 20 31. I'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve the payment of bills. Second. A motion and a second. Any questions or anything done? It's out of the ordinary. Um, just that under the capital funding grant, um, we had $38,000 go to our air handler unit project, which is almost complete. Um, the air handler unit at the high rise was, I think, original to the building. So it was a big oh. project. Um, and then some additional funding for carpet and window replacement at our different scattered sites. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is designate authority for COVID-19 personnel policy and safety measures. So I decided to bring this item to the board because of the big surge in cases that are happening right now, um, particularly in our region. Um, and I was talking with other directors in our West Central region, other directors of housing authorities, and um, we've all had preparedness plans in place since July, at least. Um, and there's just a range of practices um, around, you know, some boards have formally adopted the preparedness plan. Um, other boards have designated that authority to the executive director. Um, and I think there's other agencies like us to this point where we, we put our plan in place and the executive director has been overseeing that plan. But I thought it might be helpful just to get more clarity on uh, lines of authority for that, um, just especially given the increasing cases should we need to adapt. Um, so my recommendation would be to let me have that authority and that I will, with the understanding that I will continue to consult, particularly with Greg, but with the board as needed. Um, if any changes are made, um, but I think that would just give us enough, you know, latitude to respond if there's adjustments that need to be made. So that's my recommendation, but of course the board can decide how they want to proceed. Any questions for Don? I think it's a good idea to have it, you know, to have it go through the board and passed and so it's more formalized. I think that's so you just to be clear, Greg, are you saying that you want the board to pass a plan and then if we make any changes to a plan that the board needs to make those changes? No. Okay, good. No. <laughs> okay. No. Just the plan that you put forward, I guess I think it's just better to have it, you know, voted on, I guess, and passed and so. Yeah, no I, don't think, I don't think the plan needs to be micromanaged by the board. I do think um, the overall plan and process should be approved by the, the board, the, the process for making a plan. But I think a plan needs to be able to be 
adapted or adopted or amend, amended, I should say, quickly as conditions change on the ground. Um, COVID seems to be a, sort of a fast moving thing. And um, I think Don needs the latitude to be able to to move quickly if need be. And I think consulting with Greg on common sense changes is, is good. I, with the caveat that we're not loosening guidelines and making transmission easier, that we're moving always towards caution and the safety of the tenants. Right. Yeah, I think um, it sounds like where what you're all suggesting is like perhaps passing the plan we have in place currently mm -hmm. like the board formally adopting that plan um but also giving me that latitude to make adjustments as things happen um and michael to your comment like the governor talks about turning the dial up or turning the dial down um that right now of course you know i wouldn't be turning the dial down <laughs> in terms of loosening anything um and so, and, and, and it is really helpful to, with anything that would be um, significant that needs to change quickly, um, I am able to connect with Greg pretty easily. So I will certainly do that. Um, I just, yeah, I wouldn't want to have to wait for a board meeting or call a special board meeting or anything like that. Right. Right. Yep. You need the flexibility definitely to deal with this. So. All right, if there's no other questions, then I will entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Okay, motion and a second. Any further comments, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're on to other business. Oh, I'm sorry. I should be moving my cursor down. I've got to pull it up my on another screen, screen so. but I haven't been pulling it down as we talk. So it is posted on the website so people can open the board packet. But sure. Let me bring that down. So the next item is definitely my favorite agenda item, maybe of the year. <laughs> And that's just to share that Lillianne's artwork was selected as a finalist. And so when the 2021 calendars come out, um, her artwork will be featured as one of the calendar months. Um, wow. Awesome. Yeah. So we're just really excited. Um, I had the opportunity to meet with Lillianne and her mom. Um, and of course, she's really excited. Um, they do have calendars on pre order right now. So I was thinking of ordering, um, and we can do this within our current budget, but ordering like five calendars for Lillianne so that she has some extras that maybe she can give to, you know, close family or friends. Um, and then, of course, we always do it for our staff and our board members, but we could look at branching out a little bit just given the significance of this. Um, maybe to the city council, um, you know, other key partners. Yes. Um, and then in addition to that, I think um, Lillian and her mom said they would be willing to speak with the media. So I thought it would be good to maybe reach out um, where we could do a, a news story on, on this. I mean, if you look at all the artwork on that link that is included in the agenda, um, these are highlighted from kids all across the country. So it's just really exciting to see Moorhead kind of on the map and to have her share her story on, on that kind of a platform. Love it all. Yep. I, I, I was thinking same thing, city council, mayor, get up city manager. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a big deal. Yeah. Let's take advantage and, and get it out to the media and yeah, I think it's great. All right. Wonderful. You ready to hear about Maple Court townhomes? Yes. 
Okay, yep. and Shelly's on the line too, and she heard the council presentation. Um, and I included a link just for board members to take a look at that. I think it's helpful in that um, we really have a process where um, we're going down the same road along concurrently with the city. Um, mm -hmm. And so just staying really close in, in our communication and, and our efforts. Um, the city council was extremely supportive um, and did pass a resolution to proceed with pursuing the acquisition. Um, so we still have some things to finalize, but um, that was really great. Um, and so now we're just in a mode of, um, I have a meeting set up next week with um, a counterpart at the city to go through more details from Greater Minnesota Housing Fund on their financing. Um, and then we're also preparing information again for the Minnesota Housing Finance Agency so that they can finalize. Um, we've been going back and forth with them for a number of months, but this would be kind of the ultimate decision by them around um, splitting up the parcels, the event, eventual tenant ownership provisions on the city side, um, on the Moorhead Public Housing side, um, us absorbing that 0% loan. So kind of getting all of that finalized. Um, Another big step will be us having a purchase price that we agree to with the seller. Um, on the city side, all of that is very much spelled out in their right of first refusal. Um, whereas on the Moorhead public housing side, that's more up for negotiation. Um, and so we'll be working on that. And um, I anticipate an executive session coming um, even either at our next meeting or we may have to schedule like a special board meeting to do an executive session just because I don't know that we should wait until January, late January. Um, but I know December 15th is kind of right around the corner because we're meeting a little earlier to avoid the Christmas holidays. So um, more information to come on that, but um, we'll be bringing some things forward to the board to finalize um, and then continuing to work out the financing. Any questions on Maple Court? I would say we're still at least a few months out from purchasing. Um, so it's again, quite a process, but we are inching closer. That's good, moving forward and it's good to have the city's support. And then I think now I have to go back up to the agenda again. It's just grant updates and other grant updates. updates. Okay. Um, a couple grant updates One <laughs> on the section 18 demo dispo application for repositioning of the scattered sites. I did recently, I've been going back and forth the whole last month since we last met um, where the board passed that resolution for us to proceed. Um, I got the field office. Um, the HUD field office in Minneapolis did approve us submitting our application to the special application center. So I kind of had to go through like <laughs> submitting my application to the HUD field office and going back and forth. And now I need to submit it to the special application center. Um, and it is a slightly different application format. Mm -hmm. So that's a little, dis you know, a little um, disappointing, um, but we'll keep plugging away on that. Um, and then the Ross grant was submitted last week, um, and that's really significant. That would be to renew the Ross program for the next three years. Um, I will say I feel really, really good about what we submitted. Um, we read through the NOFA, which is kind of HUD's instructions on what to include. It stands for Notice of Funding Availability. We read through that NOFA multiple times. Um, I collaborated with both Tanya and Tony on submitting that grant. Um, and so now I, I haven't seen anything on when they're going to tell us. Okay. Um, hopefully it will come much sooner than later. Um, and um, but I do feel really good, like we'll probably get all of the points possible. That's that's kind of how optimistic I am. Good. When does the current one end? Current, the current one ends on April 15th. Oh, OK. So that's why I'm like, I want to hear well, I want to hear today, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, hopefully by January at the latest. Um, and I might, maybe I'll ask some other directors about 
what's typical because I haven't been through a Ross renewal before. So maybe there's some precedent. Um, it's hard to say with COVID though, with anything about precedent, but I can certainly check that out. And then my last update is about the safety and security grant that I talked with the board about with applying for cameras. Um, and I talked with Greg about this briefly, but I sort of bit off more than I could chew when it comes to grant applications um, and just really ran up against some big constraints with my workload. Um, and given the fact that it was a pretty big long shot for us um, in getting that grant, you know, for a variety of reasons. Um, it's just highly competitive and you have to have generally very, very compelling evidence around safety issues, which fortunately we don't. Um, we made the decision not to proceed with that application. Um, I will say if we, if our odds would have been better, I definitely would have um, pushed through um, and put those additional hours in, um, but it just didn't seem like it would be worth um, worth it. So my plan is to bring to the board at the next meeting, um, I'm gonna go through kind of where we're at with our capital funding grant five-year plan and budget, where we're at with, you know, the clay transfer being approved and that extra funding. Um, and I think it would be just overall a, a good time to give you kind of a big picture update on those funds um, and then bring maybe bring forward a recommendation to you around um, doing some camera upgrades and what that would cost. Um, in preparing for the application that we ultimately didn't submit, we did meet with a couple of contractors. Um, you know, we did some research. So I knew that, you know, we would be able to use that whether we were selected um, with the grant or not for the agency planning purposes. So I think we can go through that and kind of come up with a with a game plan and a recommendation for you. Sounds good. And then I am watching on the pop grant when that will be coming out the next one from MHFA. Um, and then our bridges renewal will be happening and that's an every two year competitive process. Um, also with Minnesota Housing Finance Agency. So that grant, the one we're on right now, it expires at the end of the state fiscal year, which um, coincides with our fiscal year, June 30th. So I'm guessing probably January, we'll be hearing something um, and maybe submitting February, March. Um, so that's kind of on the horizon. And then just another update that I just want to acknowledge um, our strategic plan reporting process that the board adopted called for a quarterly check-in and I have not been successful at staying on that um, timeline. I think we've been so busy working the strategic plan itself. Um, the last time I gave you an update was in August. And so I just wanted to share that that is on my radar um, and I'm hoping to bring a review um, to the board at a future meeting. And I know this is our first year too, so we can be thinking about if we do want to tweak that, if you do want to continue with quarterly updates or if semi-annual updates would be better. Um, I'm sure an annual would be too light. So we're, I think we'll have to kind of feel our way through that, but um, we are continuing to work that strategic plan. Um, other updates, just to say that a reminder, we will be meeting a week earlier next next um, month. Um, and Tony did include the 2021 board calendar with the amendment that the board um, discussed at the last meeting, um, updated on that calendar. So you should have all of our meeting dates for 2021. Um, I can't wait to see all of you in person again, um, but at this point we haven't booked any spaces. Um, we're just gonna wait and see. Um, as we kind of ride this pandemic out. Those are my updates. All right, sounds good. Anybody else have anything? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's my dog, Sophie. <laughs> yeah, lot to say. <laughs> yeah. Sophie keeps right. the housing. <laughs> yeah. Funny timing was perfect. Yeah. 
All right, if nobody has anything else, then we will adjourn the meeting. Everybody have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Thank you too. All of you as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks.